While searching South Africa's sardine run for the Cape's missing white sharks, the team have landed in the middle of an underwater battle. As the spinner sharks charge in, they scatter the sardines. This makes it easier for them to pick off strays separated from the pack. But the chaos also makes the conditions more dangerous for the team. I think our best bet is jump back onto the boat. Okay, come here. Let's head over that way. Amazing. It's pretty murky down there. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> sharky too, right? Yeah, we should probably get on the boat. <laughs> Do you hear the Jaws theme music? <laughs> Using the paragliders as scouts and Allison's hydrophone, the team continues searching the sardine run for the next five days. And while there's multiple reports of white sharks in the area, none of the sightings match Allison's database. In the five days that we've been filming here, almost every day we've had the reports of white shark sighting. During the dive, we had a massive amount of food in the water, a massive amount of sharks with very poor visibility. And then just as quickly as the sardines arrived, disappeared. And since then, the white sharks have pushed off. The sightings in both Umkomas and the Cape have led the team to a dead end. But then, a few days later, they get incredible news. We just got a ping from Bear. We can't believe the direction he's headed now. He's on his way back to Mossel Bay. The signal from Bear the shark has come back online and it looks like he's bringing the team full circle. With the expedition nearing its end, the team doubles down on Mossel Bay, and they're trying new strategies. Andy will focus on deploying an underwater surveillance system. All right. While Allison is searching the bay using her hydrophone. I have just put the hydrophone into the water to have a listen and see if we can hear any sharks with acoustic tags in the area. All the animals we did in hands by start with an ID code 62. So that's what we're looking out for, anything with a 62. Just a few hundred yards away, Andy is dropping in his first bruv. Bombs away. So we're dropping our bottom bruv. It's basically a drop cam. It's got multiple cameras that can record for a long time. And the idea is to get as many ID shots as we can. We're on the bottom. A bruv is essentially a baited remote underwater video station. They're low tech, but they give you a high tech result because sharks are often willing to come right up to a bruv, check it out, show both sides of the animal, maybe bite it. So you're getting tons of data without even being underwater. OK, just let it, let it go like that. It's fine, fine, fine. OK. These batteries and these cards should roll for at least two or three hours. While the bottom brubs roll for hours recording sharks along the ocean floor, Andy has devised another way to ID sharks in real time. All right, Christo. So this is our floating bruv. It's essentially going to be running recon for us under the boat. And it's got a live feed, super high resolution. Hopefully, this will get us a few more ID shots. Brubs away. Hopefully, it doesn't get bit. That looks like a shark down deep already. I'm going to go check the live feed. OK, cool. I'll just keep an eye on it, yeah. Uh, it's looking good. Whoa, whoa, we got a shark. It's got, like, some blue marking on it. All right, he's coming again. All right, he's turned off. He's coming in from the left. Oh, it's a different shark. No, oh, two sharks, two sharks. Oh, this is perfect. All right, looks like we got another one coming in. Oh, it's a big male. Oh, this shark is huge, man. Wow, this is incredible, man. Sharks like this size are not normal here. This is a massive male.
see it out there? Yeah, yeah, I've just passed on the passed on the left hand side there, but there's one one right behind the bruv. Coming again? Whoa, whoa, oh! Whoa. Dude, he's hitting the camera. Pull it up, pull it up. Watch your feet, watch your feet, watch your feet. Whoa! Oh, Jesus. it looks like you bit the cable. Oh. I really wasn't expecting that much action on this thing, let alone for the whole thing to pretty much yeah. get destroyed, or the cable yeah. at least. But I think we got some great ID shots. The photo IDs could confirm if any of the sharks currently in Mossel Bay are members of the missing Cape population. But there's another way to search for them. So the hydrophone's in the water. If there's a white shark in this area from hands by, We'll get a number on the screen, and we'll start to hear a series of pings. The team scans the bay with the hydrophone for hours, searching for a signal from any of the missing Cape Sharks. OK, we've got a really clear ping here. 6272, that's my shark! Holy crap! OK, we've got an ID here on a hands by tank shark. That is fantastic. The team now has evidence that one of the Cape's missing sharks is nearby. This shark is one that I'm really familiar with. He's called Mini Nemo. And actually, we've watched him grow from a really small animal of just a few foot in length to being over a 12-foot white shark. So the holy grail would really be if Mini Nemo rocked up and we could get the satellite tag into him. Ooh. That was incredible. Because of the hydrophone's limited range, the team wants to get a satellite tag on Mini Nemo to track him over greater distances. I'm so excited! With evidence that Mini Nemo is nearby, they quickly get to work to lure him in. There's a this small little one. Don't recognize him. Oh, oh. Wow! A sat tag on a Cape Shark could provide the most valuable data to date on the missing population. No, no. it's not that one. It's another one. Orange on its nose. But instead of drawing in Mini Nemo, the bait attracts Mossel Bay's aggressive juveniles. That's not him. Watch out. Oh! Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wow! What was he going for? Where's Max? Max? Where's Max? <laughs> oh, the adrenaline's pumping now. <laughs> Even though the team fails to get a sat tag on Mini Nemo, there's still a chance that the long-lost shark has appeared on one of their underwater surveillance cameras. OK. So we got some great footage. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pack up, we're going to head in to see if we can find any of the missing Cape sharks through photo ID. So here we have all the photo IDs of every single shark we saw on this expedition. Look at the fin IDs and see if we can recognize any either from above water or below. After comparing every shark they encountered against Allison's database, they make an incredible discovery. What's that? Is that a tag? That is an acoustic tag, and that is one of mine. Hand spy? That's a hand spy shark. Oh, wow. Although not many Nemo, this tagged female is even further confirmation that some sharks from the Cape have come to Mossel Bay. Look at that. You can see it. It's rosy. That's amazing. I mean, we first saw her in Hans Bay in 2014. She's now a very large female. Wow. Perfect. That's, That's really cool, hey? What this does is it actually gives me some hope. Because right now, we've really been at a loss as to where our sharks have gone. And even though this is not conclusive, we cannot confirm that the Cape sharks have moved here, it's certainly encouraging to see there are large males in Mossel Bay and there are white sharks that I recognize. My word, guys, I must say, we've been really lucky on this expedition to get one at that wow. size. Yeah, that's Look cool. at him. Largest white shark I've ever seen in Mossel Bay. Certainly our record size satellite tags for Mossel Bay and possibly South Africa as well. That's incredible.